Hey guys, welcome back to Shot to the Nog, How episode you? four, right? How you doing? <laughs> guys, listen, the topic of the day, now me and John were just discussing this a little while ago about the martial art and our lives. Now, <laughs> the question is, have you ever had to use your martial art in a altercation, if you will? <laughs> right? So... Here's the thing, right? Now, I'm going to go into my correction stuff here, so bear with us. Now, my correction days, right? Pretty much, if you don't know what a correction officer is, let me explain it to you. It's a guy that works in jail and has to deal with inmates, right? People who have been arrested, waiting for trial, especially here in Rikers Island, right? They're all detainees. <laughs> well, I've heard a lot of booze. They're, they're, you know, um, on Rikers Island, they're detainees now. Uh, I came up at the end of what uh, what corrections guys would call the dark ages. And uh, it was pretty much a time, It well now because things have changed so much, I really, I probably wouldn't even recognize what corrections is now. But when I started and my time there, things were a little different. We had a little more freedom to control chaos, if you will. And uh, when we would do that by being a little physical at times, and of course, the constant assaults on staff is what we call them there's been a you know I, I can i can fill hours upon hours of how many fights i've been in on rikers island uh when i was a correction officer now there weren't fights that i had started right although maybe one or two but they were pretty much uh, inmates having issues with staff now when i the the area i worked the, the area i worked was the mental observation uh which is pretty much with inmates on psychotropic medication or people faking uh, just to beat their case. You know, yes! I had a lot of guys. I had a lot of guys pretend to be crazy <laughs> and legitimately tell me, "Hey, I'm faking this just to beat my case or just to really? get some time shaved off or just to just to." And 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 yeah, there's people that do that. I mean, it makes sense. You know, if you're looking at 20 years and if you act crazy and you can do 10 of those 20, I mean, you're gonna act crazy, right? It's gonna, you know, it's things that happen. But um, I'm, that's that's where I'm gonna go with my stuff now. John here, he's uh, he's got a little bit of a different aspect on 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 uh, <laughs> using a martial art. Yeah. Now here's the thing, right? I hope that I, none of this can be used against me. There is a statute of limitations. Just want to put that out there. <laughs> the following context. The following context. <laughs> yeah, mine comes from the nightclub time back in the limelight, palladium, and right. the tunnel days. And yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. That now now mind you, he's been training pretty much his whole life. I started ten years ago. Prior to that, I had no martial arts training. Uh, and when I was in corrections, I like I had mentioned earlier before in the previous podcast, uh, I was aware of jujitsu. I was aware that I wasn't really into it. I was more of a pro wrestling fan, and I was delving into trying to figure out, you know, like the, the, the pro wrestling, where it came from, catch wrestling, all that stuff. That's kind of where my experience in, in what I would call martial arts came at that time. Pretty much, as a correction officer, I just had my hands and whatever I could come up with during a, a fight with an inmate. There's a lot of times I've, I've had to, and I want to say use uh, catch wrestling because pretty much that's what I did. I, I would use wrestling holds on people to, to subdue them, to keep them down or to try to take them down. <laughs> and I'm not talking suplexes or DDTs or anything like that. But I'm, I'm, you know, like actual, like, you know, an arm bar here and there, you know, things like that. I was able to, to do that. But most of the time I was punching people in the face or trying to, you know, goozle them by the throat. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much my extent in martial arts uh, use in, in, on the island. But uh, <clears throat> since you actually have uh, a, a, an actual situation where you had to use the martial arts that you were already training in a situation, mm. right? Let's 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 give the fans here a, a little taste of you know, like oh boy. as a martial artist, right? Because you're you know you're like, okay. So uh, for me, it started that uh, I had a, a best friend who worked in the clubs, and he knew uh, the the main head of security for for these clubs. Uh, uh, predominantly, this was back in the uh, big club days of uh, with, with the king of the nightclub businesses, uh, uh, Peter Gation. 
Uh, there's like a series and documentary about him. Uh, I got to work. I didn't get to go work directly under him right away. I worked uh, uh, just because I spent seven years or more uh, in the industry. Uh, I, you know, I got to uh, get closer and closer to see uh, and deeper and deeper to see what it was like that life. But at the first, it was exciting. Um, how it started for me was I had already had from the 80s into the uh, 90s. Uh, I was already doing ninjutsu, uh, for, uh, but the way that I did ninjutsu back then, like I said, it was practical. Even even for the level of how it was done back then, the way I did it was always more pragmatic. I, that's my approach to start with. I always wanted to do this being from the street, and then also when I, when I was working, these clubs were different. Uh, this uh, this is something that I can I can also say I thank God for that, uh, to have the experience and know what it's like to be inside of these humongous Studio 54 type clubs where it's like, so much going on. Of course, we're not just talking about drugs and alcohol, right, right. But just <clears throat> sex and 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 all sorts of uh, fun and festive chaoticness. Now that being said, you know, the, uh, it wasn't always hard. There were the, there were nights that were like <coughs> easier than other. Uh, it's mostly when we and I hate to say throw this out there, but it was mostly when we dealt with the bridge and tunnel crowd. Uh, you know, meaning Long Island, Staten Island. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so, Jersey. <laughs> Jersey. What do we call them? The freaking, uh, uh, you know what they are. So, uh, that being said, uh, you being a... <laughs> that was just more for you. I just had it to buy We need to eat steaks, bro. And this is long as that shit. That is a long... <laughs> Um. Uh, okay, so I got in. Small guy. I'm, I'm only five nine, five ten. I've, I've lost an inch since I got in. <laughs> You're the, slouching. Yeah, I'm slouching <laughs> on in pressure on my vertebrae. No, yeah. but um, uh, when I went into it back in the days, I started with the. I, I don't know what I started with the Palladium. Palladium was my Palladium. first one. Now the Palladium was oh, awesome. I wish cool. it was still around. Yeah, I they really, closed that man. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, remember, how long ago? There? Yeah, how long ago they closed that? Ah, that was, you know, like what over twenty years. Yeah, now, yeah. At long least. Time ago, yeah. I was part of it. I even got pictures of actually. I was in it to the end, so they actually closed. And, and mm -hmm. a lot of I want to put it out there because a lot of guys that I still know on my Facebook still around. Uh, uh, I don't want to drop names, but there's a ton of names of guys I used to work with. Um, we got all have stories. Now, if I got to talk about, we're talking about. I'm in my twenties. Excited about I was uh, basically a personal trainer during the week, uh, working in Baddies Total Fitness back in the day, uh, living by myself in a studio apartment, and then working the weekends nightclub. The life, about the single life, the man. goddamn oh, life. God, <laughs> I, I wish I can go back. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so I've lived it. Uh, I've enjoyed it, and we was to just it was incredible. Uh, going into work, finding a park, park finding a park that's on front uh, on Fourteenth Street was easier back then. You, you got there early. Stayed around, ate dinner, whatever it was, prepared right. and, and helped set up, and then the night started. And right. then you got your guest list. You have your, your, your you know, your, your the people, the bus boys, and everybody getting security, getting to situ right. uh, the management, um, of which I would love to drop names. But there's so many names <laughs> that I would have to drop that that uh, I, I, uh, you guys know who you are. <laughs> we got some stories. You know what? Might even just drop some. Names. <laughs> let's go back. I mean, I've dropped already Peter Gation's name yeah. and Alex's wife, and let's go down to people that I was closest with. We start with security. We're talking about now. I'll be Patty Fisco, Rob Fisco, so Louis Fisco, Pino Fisco, the Fisco brothers that helped get me in. Carmine was there at the time, my best friend at the time. And we're going down to Sterling and Lonnie Rice, and we, it just goes on and on. You guys know who you are. Right. Shout outs to you. Uh, and of course, I can't forget my boy. Uh, um, uh, the, the, uh, shit, I can't remember their names now. I'm, I, too many punches to the head. <laughs> It'll come back to me. Uh, anyway, so back in the day, they, they, they brought me in, and there were times when. This shit hit the fan. Me being the smallest guy, because the guy, the bouncers there were huge. They were huge, big guys. They were there for more presence than anything else. And right. of course, the intimidation people. factor. Exactly, which is like freaking when you go to Rikers now. It's yeah, That's pretty what much. I work with. Yeah, <laughs> and, pretty much. Um, it wasn't uh, easy being oh, a small guy either. <laughs> and I, I, I can't shout out to Jake, Jake Carucci, of course. He was one of my main guys that, that was always mad cool with me. And, and I'm not going to get into anybody else that I can think of right now. But uh, that being said, so, um, yeah, so. Yeah, there were times when, you know, 
you, we would have to go, you have to know your shit. And I think way before I went there, they even had a crew of black belt guys that you would have to go and spar and get in. It was some crazy shit, some crazy nice. times. I didn't have to do that because I had I knew the new, who I needed to know. And they knew that I knew what I knew. And I was getting into MMA at the time, but back then it was jiu-jitsu. And, and anyway, so that being said, I did a lot of wrist locks. I did a lot of stuff. There were stories. Let me get into stories. Uh, I'll tell you some stories. There were times when, when uh, you have to ask, escort people out, for example. There were times when I was in the Michael Todd room. I had to right. break up a fight. And, and, and you really had to cover your own ass. But for the most part, let me just say, what I did was, like, the, the, guy, the big bouncers that were there, uh, what they would do is, like, we would stand on the speakers. You guys remember when they played them, they had these big-ass speakers. And, and it would be like, you're standing on so you above the crowd. The speakers were probably four to five feet off the floor. They were huge speakers right. uh, made out of wood. And the crowd would be dancing. You see the heads above. And then you, you know, the bouncer would jump in. You could see the bouncer. Yeah. But it's like, because I jumped in behind him, and I was the average. <laughs> it's like, I disappeared. <laughs> so I had to hang on to the back of the bouncers. And they, when they cut through the crowd, I just surfed them. You know what I mean? Like, Right. Like wind surfed them, right. and they would go and break up the fights. And I, what I would do is mostly watch their back in right. the beginning and just make sure that while they're ripping, breaking up the fights and, and spitting up these people, usually group fights or single fights, I would watch their back, and, right. and it would be like they don't see me as because we're dressed in black, and right. they don't see like they they see a bouncer, they're about to pick up a stick or a bottle yeah, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or something, and they want to hit the bouncer. I'll be the one to intercept that, right? Yeah, I'll take that guy out. Okay. Throw him down, lock him up. The other guy, and then they'll grab him up. <laughs> nice. And that's some of the, that's like some of the stuff that I used to do, and I used to, I, I definitely earned a, a, a name for myself. You know what I mean? Um, and there were times when you know I had to do it by myself. I, I didn't have a bouncer to go behind, right. a bigger bouncer. Right. And uh, one time, I, a funny one. I'll tell you a funny one. I was standing. I was. I got moved up to clicker position. So I was actually the clicker for a long time. I, mo I got moved up from bouncing to the person who counts the tickets. It's called right. a clicker. It was the called little a clicker. counter. Yeah. That's, uh, it, which, so they called me the clicker. So mm -hmm. I was known as John Dark, the clicker. <laughs> and I hope that's not incriminating. <laughs> so uh, there was a time when I was doing the Palladium and they would come, oh, one guy was leaving. And I used to get irritated sometimes. These guys are just knuckleheads. Get, after a while, the drunken people get annoying. But, right. So one guy came, he was a tough guy, and I remember one funny story where he, I'm going to tell the funny stuff first until I'm ready to incriminate myself, but he came back and was starting, oh, he was leaving, I said, listen, next time go out that way, he started talking crap. Right. Yeah, man, yo, what the fuck, you know, like, the, you know, like he was the, the, the biggest thug in the world, and yeah. I was like, listen, just keep walking, bro, if, if I go over there, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna slap the shit out of you. <laughs> you're right, you're, you say, what? See that in my face, you know, he started, <laughs> so, and I was like, I was like, um, um, listen, if I go over there, I'm gonna slap. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slap you. Right. You better just, you better off just keep walking. He was yeah. like, "You're right." Wait, wait. Starts walking towards me. Yeah. He says, "Really?" So I start, I'm pissed. I'm having a bad night. So I start walking to him. I remember he was all thugged out, yeah. acting tough, and 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 I got up to him and he didn't move. And I give him the. I thought I gave him a whiplash. I mushed him. It's called a mush. Yeah. A mush is like when you shove somebody's face. Pie in face. Yeah. Pie yeah. Face. Boom. Boom. Right. So I mushed him. And I mushed him so hard. I, I I got I got you know from fighting. You know how you you know, use your body when yeah. you when you do it. It was like he got whipped. Like it was hysterical because he went from yo man to smack, and he was just like, "Oh my god, such violence! <laughs> it was like such violence!" <laughs> I, I think he, he I brought the other side of him <laughs> and it was the funny it was one of my funniest experiences because I thought we were going to get down I was in that mood I was like I want to fight right now it was like my attitude back then and when he said when I mushed him and he went from thug to like yeah what to oh my god such violence oh could you oh my god it was the keep your hands to yourself you how could he just such violence I'm going to tell oh my god it was like <laughs> move on, move on. So, so that was one of my oh, funny stories. There were stories when I threw guys. I lifted a girl. Her boyfriend was acting up. I remember lift, like telling him to chill out. I remember this. It was so. I, the beautiful thing about it is I got to practice techniques. Like, hey, I got to, that's what's mattering here. That's what. And, and, that's what's... and believe me, and a lot of the guys that I was training with that I was working with, it was hysterical. I got to see some fun shit. <laughs> you see, guys doing wrist locks on each other with their mouths like, <laughs> they like they're having lollipops. They're like so devious in their face. Like, yo, yeah, let me try this now. You want to play with mm, the guy? Like that, I'm not gonna mention no names, but you know who you are. Like, I see we're laughing because we all knew each other. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're a close group of guys that we yeah. all knew each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was, it's just some funny shit. We had some funny stories. Like there were guys when I would throw them out the back door, out the gate, and they start acting up, and I just I would just trip them and throw them right into like the bars. Right. They had these fire skates back in the theater style, which are like really wide ass fire skates, mm -hmm. and they, they metal all around. And I remember like a guy I smashed him into the door because he wouldn't open it. And it was a push rod door. Uh -huh. The door would open, and he still wouldn't rust, resist. And I just tripped one leg and push him. And <laughs> he went. Uh, one guy went smashing into like the fence, like the, the poles. <laughs> I think it was, I, I thought his face and his head was gonna go through the bars. <laughs> it was like, 
And and these are some of them, them good old days. I was a bit of a prick back then, you know what I mean? And, I mean, but with that job as a bouncer, you kind of have to be because, I mean, you're not going to be everybody's friend. You got to keep everything under control so shit doesn't go haywire, right? Yeah, man. There were times when people would try to, like, grab me and I would just react. And it was like, they were not trying to grab me. They were just trying to say hi. Oh, okay. But, like, I might be behind. They might walk up behind me and I'd turn around and wrist lock them in one motion. Because it was like, but I like that. that I like that, that atmosphere because I got, it's the closest I felt, and I'm blessed in this way. It was the closest I felt that you can get to a battlefield today. Right. Like, we cannot, you know, and actually apply these techniques that I was right. learning at then. I was learning wrist locks yeah. and finger locks and hand right. and arm locks. I was learning stand-up jujitsu, you know, stand-up right. uh, taijutsu was called, right. you know. And I was applying all these techniques that I was learning, throws and locks and holds nice. and pins and trips yeah. and ankle sweeps and ankle pins and rolls and just knee pushes and, right. and, and hip tosses and sweeps and it was I got to practice a lot of these uh, uh, in many many moments there were times when people would come to me and I'd just take out the front leg with a sweep and they just fall down and I'd pin them with a knee on now it's called knee on belly but it would be knee on body put yeah. a knee on their face right. be the, you know the cops arrest we call it knee on body yeah. you know right. and I got to actually you know with, with realistically uh, with the with the mentality that you need to be careful you're pinning this person now but he could have friends exactly. coming with bottles right behind exactly. you exactly so I, that was the awareness that I got and this was right before jiu jitsu before I got full on in right. in, uh, uh, in um, uh, Brazilian jiu jitsu Gracie jiu jitsu right. so it was fun. There were some days when you do some classical jiu-jitsu locks, uh, knee to, be, to the back of the elbow, old classic samurai yeah. jiu-jitsu stuff where you pin the elbow down, the shoulder, you pin the cheekbone to the to the, to the floor, <laughs> you know, like with your knee to the cheek, to the other cheek to the floor. I think and I actually may have used that one without you know? knowing that that's what that was. <laughs> yeah, the back of the neck, you put yeah. the knee in the base and you just kind of, you arrest them. They're going to arrest them. I'm not going to say I arrest them. No. But, you know, you're, yeah. you're detained, detained. You control, yeah. you know. Control the situation. And until the rest of the guys came along, they picked them up and took them out and there was right. one incident one time that Rob Fisco called me on the radio and I was upstairs in the Michael Todd room at the Palladium and he said John come down and I remember I was working by myself up there and I started going down because he called me I was like all right and the way he said it, you know I, I just started running I was in one of those moods that day too <laughs> and as I'm going down because like, it was like up on the third and fourth floor anybody that remembers back uh, back then as I'm going down, I'm seeing all the some of the other bouncers that know me. Like they're appearing as yeah. I'm walking, they're appearing behind me, and they're like, they, their attitude was like, "I gotta see this." They, like, they knew something was was going down. Something's going something down. Like, Everybody get down to the Because mind you, Rob is a big guy. You know, yeah. for Rob, is, I knew that for Rob they didn't need me. For Rob to call me down. He was trying to show something. He was trying to demonstrate, like, yeah, the littlest guy I got here, he's the baddest ass motherfucker. So he was, that's the kind of, like, how it yeah, was. And right. I remember this incident, he called me down, and, I'm, and, and like I said, I was a small guy. So right. I knew, too, that if he's calling me down, he wanted me to, to, to be me. Like, right. he wanted John Dark to come out there. The, right. And he wanted this guy to come. And, and, I, and I, when I got downstairs to the first floor, I'm going across the bar, and I see that there's a, there was a fight. Mm -hmm. Got one guy controlled, and right. now I got one the, mm -hmm. two bouncers trying to take the night off. He was hanging on to the rail, mm -hmm. hanging on to the arm rail that was by the doors when they first on the, in the entrance. And, right. he, and he, I said, "What's up, Rob?" And he goes, "John, get this guy out of here for me." <laughs> so naturally, he, and he sits back and he watches, and and and. I, I do what I do. I, right. I, make, I do pressure point locks, thing, the real stuff, not, not, the, not the fake, not the death stuff. But I do like <laughs> joint joint manipulation. Release, uh, how's yes. that? Yes. Let's rephrase it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and I I do that. Release them. It's, I, I go into what's uh, an aikido, commonly known as, as a sankyo. Uh, it's a third technique, which you do like an inverted finger lock, uh, palm out, wrist, thumb, nice. pinky right. twist, pinch, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, wrist bend, finger yeah. twist. Yeah. And I'm walking him out with one hand, as I'm and I'm like, as I'm leading him on, I'm, I'm telling him, get open the door. The guy's screaming now. I'm like, oh, oh, what the? F and I'm going to open that. And I tell him, you know, so like I say, it was push rod doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, open it. Boom! I had him open. He wouldn't open, so I smashed him into it. You know, he opened it and they opened. Yeah. And I just did that. I'm walking. I remember this. This is one of my my funniest highest points because I, I already know that they want to see what I can do. <laughs> so I'm walking him along, and it's just literally just me and that guy. But I look behind me, and all of the bouncers are behind, like, like a lot, like a mob of the guys. Yeah. And Rob's in front with this other friend of mine, Glenn Beck. Uh, shout out to him. And they're laughing and looking at each other. Look at this mob. Look at him. They're smirking, and they're <laughs> carrying this guy out. And I remember just taking him all the way out to the outside door, to the right. street door. Right. Kick, you know, push him into it. He opens it up. There's, again, a push bra. Yeah, yeah. And I throw him out. And I turn back, and they're just smirking, like the biggest grins <laughs> on their face. like Because, you know, there was that time period where they were training with me. So mm -hmm. oh, I think he was just trying to prove a point. But, right. Because yeah, back then it was like, 
who do you train with? Oh, I trained with that guy. He was him? That, that, I was just like, you him? He, that guy? He trains you? And my, my, little my guy. dog's little, and yeah. these guys are huge. Right, right. And he goes, he rolls at you? He taps you out? He does, you know, that's what it was like yeah, back then. Yeah. So they must have been like, yeah. And he goes, that guy, you see the way he is? He, he, he does his shit. So nice. I think that's what it was like. It was like, okay, so then they have to prove it. So they used to do that to me a lot. They would Very be like, cool. John, go ahead. John, do that. John, do this. And right. I'd be like, okay, boom, boom. So I did earn my my keep and I did earn the respect there and I was actually the trainer for a lot of the main very, guys there very you know? cool very cool that's my story I'm still yeah no, <laughs> <laughs> no that, that, that's excellent and see here you have the martial artist applying his martial arts to a job that was very much fun and I'm sure there's more stories that we'll cover another time. Probably stuff we shouldn't say. No, definitely not. Definitely <laughs> you, not. you drop names. I can't drop any names. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, I have to give props. So it's not, yeah. I'm not just name dropping. I, I, you know, I got to give thanks to these guys because yeah. there was a group of us that worked together for a while. Mm. You know what I mean? And they looked out a lot. They got me the work. Right. And I have to give them the props because... They took a risk on having a small guy. I'm also, I was also a lot crazier back then. Like right. They'll tell you, like, I'm just, John, fucking. They used to say every day, like, John, you out of whack. You out of your fucking mind. <laughs> this is why I used to hear, like, John, you're crazy. You Insane know? human being over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but it's cool that, that you have that experience. And also, it, it, you know, it goes to show that um, martial arts, real martial arts, is applicable and practical. And if it works, it works. Right? It has to work. Uh, especially for being a bouncer. And I'll tell you a story about uh, jumping into chaos with the guy trying to hit me with a bottle, and I ended up taking the bot, the, doing an evasive move, nice. like, you know, right. taking the taking the, the arm, and, you know, him out of the way, and right. then turning him around. But the guys were coming at me with bottles, oh, and boy. I used the, the first guy that took a swing. This is a true story. I'm not making this up, man. I, I, the guy caught the bottle, grabbed his collar, smashed him on the floor, brought him back up. All in one action, <laughs> and then his friends were coming with bottles, and I turned the guy around. The one that attacked me, I yeah. turned him around, using him as a human shit. <laughs> and it was not gonna lie, it was scary. I was shit in my pants. I'm not gonna lie. And like they were coming at me, and I just used them like this. I was backing <laughs> up and using them as a shield. And I was backing off the floor with the right, guy. Right. Grabbed his collar, mine right. just still had his collar in his wrist. Yeah. And I kept him like in a, in, in a, a, a bow and arrow type of jujitsu bow and arrow position with yeah. the arms out and stretched up. Yeah. And I'm backing up, and they're just trying to hit me, but they're hitting, they're hitting, <laughs> they're hitting him. Because I'm just pulling, I'm shielding. That's, that's I'm why just, the human shield is for. <laughs> exactly. It's no, it's no different than what the cops use when they use the shield and clubs. I was right. just using him as a shield. Yeah. yeah. And I was using his arm as like a battering <laughs> blocker. And I was just moving backwards, back. I was working my way back off the floor until mm. all the bouncers came in and, right. and, and joined me. But they were getting, they were beating his friends. Poor up. guy. <laughs> <laughs> was, he was cut open. He was demolished. Oh, boy. You know? But that's how it was. It was survival back then. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I'm not going to, honestly, I'm not. And it wasn't multiple points. Now, you can see, it wasn't multiple points where I take one guy out and the other guy. No, it was no, like, no. use one guy, one guy to, to shield me while I'm waking my way yeah, out. Right. And they use him as a shield behind me. So they, what, if they're attacking Which me. Which is I'm, very much realistic. <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> You know, that's a technique I can teach because I did it. Battle yeah. feel proven. <laughs> Battle tested? Battle, Battle tested. Proved. Yeah, so, and let's go into corrections for a second here, right? When I started, right, they had they had um, PT, physical training. They had us do some, I guess, just to not be liable, they teach um, martial art-ish style uh, techniques. Now looking back on, on what I learned, I... Pretty much none of it is realistically useful. It's it's just it's bad stuff. Um, one of my students, uh, she's actually a correction officer. While she was in the academy, she would come and show me the stuff that they would show her, and it's actually gotten worse since I <laughs> since I started there, right? Wow. And I'm yeah. looking back at what well, going on 18, 19 years ago, right? Maybe even more than that. <laughs> And with like the stuff they showed us, here here's an example of what they showed us, right? Uh, they would show us, and the instructors there were two black belts, two karate black belts. Now these guys were old school karate black belts, but the stuff that they were showing us were like I don't even know. Like this one class, we spent the the whole hour, uh, the whole hour just doing karate blocks, right? Like up, up hand blocks, like like high blocks. Yeah, high blocks, right? Oh just with the stance and everything. You don't look it. With the circle of the foot, you know, you gotta oh, drag go the foot that, circle, uh, and then oh my God, you cross yeah. your arms and you block an wow. up, like an like an upward oh, attack. Old school karate. That's, yeah, that's like, and 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 again. I know the circle step. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. With the breathing. Yeah, and this is this was this was the, this was the class. The class would pretty much be us learning some some form of blocking, right? 
they would have us warm up with 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 basic karate style strikes, you know, kia kia, <laughs> right? And this is a group of freaking like it, it, it was a, a varying group of ages and also different size people. Now I I was a lot bigger back then, but I wasn't as big as I, I recently got. But I was I was a good size, right? Uh, but I was still short, so. Um, I, I didn't have a problem doing any of the techniques, but uh, it would, like, uh, looking back now specifically, none of that shit could ever work in any situation. That's, that's, that's the stuff that's not going to get the job done anywhere. That's, that's at least on the island, right? Yeah, and because and, and this is the thing, right? And this is what they tell you once you get, once you get your shield, once you start work. Like, if you got a good partner to, to, to break you in on the job, they'll tell you, hey, listen, whatever you learned at the academy, throw that shit in the garbage because it's useless, right? The only thing you could really use is the paperwork stuff, right? All the all the clerical shit that you learned. Yeah, keep that. I'm going to tell you what I learned if I can. Yeah, go ahead. Because my school, I used to have a school right next door to the Right, right, right next to Cobra. So to yeah. And back in this era, it was uh, uh, Stephen Norman Seabrook. Norman right? Seabrook, right. And I got to know him I, uh, and everything. But Not a popular I, guy. No, I popular. could tell you, yeah. <laughs> I could tell you, though, from what I learned, they don't want to hire a professional. What they used to do, from what I learned, is yeah. whoever among the officers uh, exactly if you got karate yeah. lessons. If you, then, if you listen, if I was still a, if, and they would just pay them for, this, on hourly. Pretty much, yeah. You, 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 you're at the academy teaching, and it's not curriculum that the city approves. The thing is just, uh, it's just shit that the guy came up with. It said, it's the you know, it's 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 stuff that he's not gonna get. In trouble for if he uses. Or he enjoys because it's a hobby and he wants to share in the, you know, the it, whole. But it, like it was, and, and of course everything is called soft hand techniques, right? So they cover themselves, right? Mm. Obviously, you can't punch a guy in the face. That's illegal, yeah. right? It's, it's very much illegal. But it happens. It happens. The correction, you know, it's a fight. Fights happen. There is, you know, there is a, there, you know, if you feel in danger, you gotta defend yourself. But the stuff that they showed us at the academy, like, I wouldn't teach to anyone ever under any circumstance because it's just bad bad martial arts mm -hmm. it's useless and even even the stuff that they were showing us like besides the besides the the high blocking and the, the, the punching and the strikes that's all good right but mind you we're at the academy for i don't know how many months but like if you want to be efficient in any of that shit i think you should train that shit for years i agree right I agree. not just agree. not just a couple classes a week <laughs> it's 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 like anything else, you know. It, it, it's just them covering themselves. Because once you took the class, you signed a little paper. They're no longer liable. The city has now put everything on you. If you fuck up, it's on you. If you get hurt, it's on you. Yeah. We yeah. taught you high block. And yeah, I'm sure the sad part is that people went and learned this and thought they were like, oh, I can, I'm Superman. I can take oh, on everybody. Oh, dude, there was <laughs> there was a specific class that it, it, it was showing us how to do a a, a wrist lock, right? A coda gash, yeah. right? Now the the way that they showed it to us was horrible, horrendous. <laughs> Pretty much the guy slaps you in the chest and grabs your shirt, right? Like a grab, like a grab. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. a grab. Sure and you, and you, and you, Stuff that we learn in jiu yeah, yeah, and you peel it and you go into a two-handed yeah. kotogash where you uh, you know you finish, you take a half step around. And For you, the record, kotogashi, koto means wrist. Right. More of the hand, it's a wrist lock, and right. And is to turn over. So it's just a right. wrist rotation. Pretty much, pretty much that's what it was. And that's the tech, that was the technique we spent a whole class on. Mind you, the guys that were there was two guys training it, and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna train this for real. We're gonna do it like it's really happening." And they were slapping each other in the chest really hard and grabbing each other's shirts really hard and really trying to resist. Did it sound like this? Very much. <laughs> it was just it was it was comical to see because these were two older guys, right? And they were really really going at it. Not, they were older than me because I was young as fuck, but they were like in their twenties and. and Upper twenties, uh, thirties even, and these guys were older than me. I was like nineteen, twenty. Right? Their prime. So, so this this freaking these two guys are going at it, and they're feeling like a hundred thousand dollars, man. They're <laughs> they're each going hard on each other. They're doing the coda gash. They're doing the wrist lock. They're throwing each other around on the floor, right? These guys are going at it hard, and I'm standing there, and I'm doing. I'm working with a girl, mind you. I can't really, I can't really grab her in the chest, right? So I have to reach up, I have to reach up on her shoulder, right? Right. So so she could do the technique, right? And and I'm doing it, and I'm kind of going with it, cause you know she's and she's an she's an older, larger woman, and she's trying to get this. And here I'm thinking about, yo, what if. What if this female right in front of me here, and she's training this, somebody actually does put their hands on her on the island, which is going to happen. Is she really think that she can pull this off? And, and I'm thinking, what are these guys teaching us? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's, the, it's like the worst techniques you could ever teach. Right? Yeah. 
and the Kodagash by far was the best of all the techniques that they showed us. I, they had yeah. they, they showed us a cheap ass That's come the most along generic and, yeah. technique outside of also the guy the outside hooks. So exactly. Everybody wants to know. Mind you, <laughs> this is the mindset you have as a as a rookie as as without you don't have your shield yet, but you got right. your you got your ID. You're learning you're learning the job, and you're thinking about I'm gonna be on Rikers Island, and I'm gonna be ready because I know how to wrist lock these motherfuckers, right? Oh shit! So here we go on. I get my shield. I'm on the island. My second weekend, I have a use of force. My what? second weekend. Now, use of force is of an altercation, a physical fight, an assault, right? My second <laughs> week, right? Mind you, I'm working in one of. The, I'm not even gonna name the the facility I'm in because. <laughs> Because no, no, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm gonna keep very vague facts. There's gonna be a lot of vague facts. Safety. Yeah. So I'm 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 working on a midnight shift, right? Midnight is 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift, right? Mind you. Graveyard. Yeah. My second week, they put me into this. Uh, see, I'm probably gonna reveal the facility once once people. So this this area. Where inmates are locked down, twenty three hours out of twenty four. It's jail, right? Yeah, and and you have to you have to feed them at a certain time, right? So it's like it's like six a.m. I'm feeding them in the morning, and there's these little the doors have slots. Now I don't know if that's changed. I'm sure it's it's been upgraded, but the doors have slots. They open up, uh -oh, I can right? See that. And you put the tray in to feed them for breakfast, and then you lock the slot again. Now sometimes, movies, yeah. yeah. Sometimes what happens is uh, some of the slots don't work, so the slots are left open, or they remove the the, the, the latch, or something. Something's wrong with it. It's an older older facility, mm -hmm. right? So I went uh, and did the morning the feedings, right? So I'm I'm handing the trays. <clears throat> I'm well, there's in, there's supposed to be an inmate with me, and uh, the officer tells me uh, it's better if you do it. You know, just have the inmate hand you the trays. And then you push the trays in because they don't want the inmates having contact with each other because, you know, they might slip a drugs or it might slip some contraband. So, Still gets through, don't we? Yeah, of course it does, right? So the, the inmates handed me the trays and I'm putting them in the slot, right? Boom, next person, feed the next person. I get to one of the doors. The guy's like, yo, let me get an extra milk. I'm like, oh, yeah. After after I feed everyone, I'll, whatever extra I have, I'll, I'll, I got you, homie. I know, mm. you, I know you're, you're, you're in there. You're fucked. And you want a little milk for your cereal? I got you, right? So I, he says, nah, man, just give me that shit right there. It's right there. It's on that tray. Just add another one. He's like, nah. I'm like, dude, relax. Uh, and I'm trying to be as cordial and as, <laughs> as nice as possible. Mind you, I'm also trying to be stern, right? Because, uh, mind you, I have a baby face, right? I have fucking... I have, and out the academy, you weren't allowed to have uh, facial hair, right? Oh, no? They had a shave, right? At, at the academy, you were not an official. So you, I, I was clean shaven. Afterwards, yeah. But I was, this was my second week on the job. I had just wow. left the academy, right? So I was in the habit of shaving. Mind you, baby face... At one point, I think one of them say, hey, I didn't know summer youth had a fucking programming correction. So I, I look so goddamn young, boy. It was insane. But if I can find a picture, I'll, I'll, I'll repost it. It's on my Instagram. One of my, one of my younger pictures. Yeah, I gotta check it out. Right? So uh, I, 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 I say no to the milk. He says, come on, CEO, give me the fucking milk. He's, now he's getting a little aggressive. And I'm like, okay, fuck it. Right? So I said, oh, let's move. Let's keep it moving. And the inmate kind of pushes past him. And then he... he the slots open because it's one of the broken slots, and he fucking throws his tray out. Right? What? He throws the food out. Boom. So he's like, "Fuck that! You clean that shit up, CEO. I don't want nothing from you." I'm like, "All right, fuck you. Don't eat. That's it, right?" And we finish feeding everybody, and uh, I go past this cell, and he fucking throws uh, poo piss. Right? Oh. And I didn't realize it was. I didn't realize it was piss immediately, right? All I knew is that something wet had hit me in the leg, right? So he threw it through his slot, right? And oh. I'm thinking, the fuck is this, right? And then I look at it, and it's you know, it, it, it's not because it's on my dark pants. I can't tell what color it is, right? But then I, I realize it, it's not cold water, right? It's a little bit, like, warm. Like he just pissed in his cup and splashed me with it, right? <laughs> so I'm like, what the fuck? And mind you... I'm having this a panic attack because now I'm thinking, oh shit, I got AIDS. Can you get AIDS through piss? <laughs> right? I'm I'm going this is that time I'm going it, through right? all these fucking thoughts, right? <laughs> and then I run to the A officer, the officer, the other officer I'm working with, and I go, dude, that guy just I think he threw piss at me. And the officer's like, What? What cell he in? Right? And I go, oh, it's cell fucking 23, whatever. So he, yo, let's bust this cell open. I go, what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> he yeah? says, come on. <laughs> and he opens the cell, right? The the fucking right? We rush in and we pummel this poor inmate. 
the way that I gotta do right? sound effects for that one right, right? Here. If I'm getting in trouble, hey, fuck it, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Right, but this was this was the time, right? This that was actually pretty good. This this was the time when when like I don't know, it's 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 a different time, different era. This is over ten years ago, right? Statue of limitations, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm not, that guy's probably upstate somewhere. Hold on, let me see this one. <laughs> I found that. So we <laughs> found Bruce Lee. <laughs> Yo, so we 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 open this up and we're pummeling this guy we're just fucking stomping a mud hole in his ass and then fucking walking it dry and he's like no co stop i'm sorry i'm sorry and this officer's like what the fuck is wrong with you trying to throw piss on my on my office and <laughs> he i'm got his, he got his ass I'm, and i'm looking at and i'm looking i'm i'm doing this but at the same time i've stepped out of my body and i'm watching myself do this and i'm like dude this is not what i like i originally signed up for this is not something that that the academy prepares you for and it was insane. It was like, I'm, and, and, you know, we're throwing body shots on him. And he's, yeah. he's in the corner by, by his bed. He's all fucking crumbled up in a little ball. Well, he asked for it. Yeah. He, I mean, he's he started me. with the, hey, give it right. And, then, right. Yeah. And, and, and then, and I'm like, afterwards, the officer pulls me out. He's like, yeah, that's how we fucking do shit around here. Don't let those motherfuckers disrespect you. I'm like, okay. So do we call the captain or something? He's like, no, you don't call nobody, man. We took care of that shit. Go change your pants. You got extra pants in the locker? I said, yeah, I did actually. Yeah, that, that's the thing. You gotta always have extra shit in your locker. They yeah, don't. yeah, for they that shit. I have, I have shit stories too, but I'm not gonna cover oh. that today. Yeah, this is a lot of crazy shit that, uh, literally, shit that went down. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what it is about mental, mental observation uh, inmates and shit. It's, they go hand in hand. It's, it's, no pun intended. Yeah, it's, it's more like hand and mouth. Oh, it's, oh, it's gross. A lot of gross button shit. Hand. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah. So that's like my second week on the job. This is my first actual altercation I had with an inmate. I mean, he splashed me with fucking urine and you got shit. To, you got to party blanket his ass. It was insane, bro. And then here mm-hmm. I am th- at the end of the day. I'm shaking after that the whole day, right? My adrenaline has... And it's, it's in the morning. It's fucking like 6, 7 in the morning. My body's shaking. I'm trembling. I'm like, holy shit, that shit, that shit just happened. I just fucking, like, I don't even... I, like, I was, I was, like, out of my body. It was out of body experience because I was watching myself pummel that poor guy, right? <laughs> But you know he asked for it. He threw piss on me. Dude, honestly, yeah. Like, it, and and this is the thing, right? I wasn't a martial artist back then, right? And and looking at looking at that uh, now as a martial artist, I'm like, how would I have handled that any how differently? Would you? I'm actually curious. What do you? Can you see yourself? What you would do now? I mean, uh, that's a good point. It's it's insane because looking at that, I mean, somebody just threw fucking piss at you, right? Probably, you know. It's disgusting. It's you know, it, it, and it's not. It's not something you can ever be ready for. How many times does someone throw piss at you? None. Right. Well, not on purpose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, you got to pay extra for that. But yeah. listen, yeah. no. I've had golden shots. TMI. TMI. <laughs> just kidding. Come just on. Kidding. We need a sound Scratch right that. <laughs> <We're going. laughs> no, listen. Dude, I wish you could do a piss on. But no, <laughs> let's not. <laughs> but it, this is the thing, right? Things in corrections happen that don't normally happen anywhere else, right? Yeah. You're that's that's actually something that's a possibility. There's that gray, Some, there's that gray area, uh, 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 the legal gray area, I guess you would call it, right? Because people they're already in jail. They feel like they can. Yeah. They, they blur that line of yeah. what they can get away with because they already figured I'm incarcerated. Yeah, and it, and it's crazy because um a lot of these a lot of these inmates like it's, I guess nowadays, but even back then, they knew that that officers wouldn't cross a line just because you know they could end up getting arrested, right? Yeah. It's you know, it's pretty much what I, I think. Did. I found a pee pee sign. <laughs> <laughs> So, so they 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 kind of they kind of push the limit by doing things like that. Like they'll 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 straight up slap an officer. I've seen it. I've seen inmates slap a female officer right across the face, wow. and 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 expect nothing in return. They got their they got their ass whoopings, but like not at that moment. <laughs> not at, yeah. But it's insane how how you're in jail. You're fucked. You did some bad shit to be in jail, and you're still doing bad shit because you think nothing's gonna happen, but things tend to happen. I mean, not now. I don't know nowadays, but back in the day, bro. Back I, I hear it gotten stricter. I heard it's it is, really it is, hard. It is very hard. In it's, favor of the, of yeah, the inmates, yeah. not so much of the yeah, officers. Officers are getting slashed left and right yeah, here, man. I, people are getting time, yeah. cut. People are getting assaulted. 
I think only two years ago, Norman Seabrook was telling me some stories of guys just, that, yeah. that, you know what I mean? That even big I guys got, that can't fight. Yeah, I got, I got friends that still work on the on the job, and they, they, they send me links and articles of, of all officers getting assaulted left and right, man. And, and yet, there's not a good martial art discipline program, or at least a soft hand and method. This is this is and this is what the thing is too. They're hiring anybody and everybody, right? That has you know what is it, sixty college credits, military time. The military it's better to have military guys on that at job. At least, Anyways. but that's mostly guns. And, but and, yeah, and if, if they're good at hand to hand stuff, that's great. But they're hiring like when I oh, there was a crop of rookies when I was there after me uh, that were like it was a group of older gentlemen that came from the 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 fallout of 9/11 they they'd lost their jobs on Wall Street and had nowhere to go so they went to the next best option which was a good paying job with good benefits at the time which was corrections so we had a lot of these guys that used to wear suits all the time mm. come in and work on the island and we had some really bad officers at that point man <laughs> Really bad officers. One guy got locked in the goddamn broom closet by an inmate, right? Wow. Just on, just people like. To, there's got to be a way to tell who who's better for this job, man. Because they need to they need to screen some of the people they let in. Especially when I was around, like there was a group of people that I I don't even remember his name, but if I did, I wouldn't say it. He was a, just an older older guy. His upper maybe he was going pushing fifty, starting as a rookie, right? Wow. And no physical presence whatsoever, right? Nothing at all intimidating at all. Looked like a goddamn lawyer, right? Straight up, clean, like balding hair style. <laughs> Older gentleman. And like we were like, some of, uh, some of the officers would just like look at, at him and a few other guys were like, how did they get this job? Like we feared for ourselves because we're thinking, dude, if we get into some shit and he's our partner, what the fuck? <laughs> What are we gonna do, right? So it, it was it was a, it was an honest like concern for some of the officers on the island when we see these these like the most. Well, yeah, you, who's got your back? Right, like as a bouncer, it, right? Who you yeah, who you gonna take that fifty five year old yeah. uh, scrawny guy or yeah. you know? Dude, the, the, I just been saying that's how I have to prove myself. Exactly. People worry about right. that. Like, yeah. who you got, can you hang? Yeah. We talking about multi? Because I guess the, this is a good point. I guess that what we have in common. Is that we're dealing with mass, yeah, pe uh, uh, mass. We're yeah. dealing with multiple right. people. We're dealing with crowd control. Right, right. I guess. And I worked in an area where it was. Um, I had forty-seven inmates on one side and forty-seven on the other, so it was ninety-four total. But the area I worked in was mm -hmm. very. Uh, it was open, so the beds were next to each other. It was in the cell area. Like the, the the story I told was from a cell area, but my regular, the steady post after my my uh, after my rookie year. I, I very quickly got a steady post in another facility, yeah. and I was able to, uh, to, to to get that post because it was one of the rowdiest posts, ah. right? And and like it was a three to eleven right. shift, so I, I I couldn't say no. I, I wanted to work three to eleven, and that was the only uh, slot available. And it was me so and give it a crap position. yeah, and and my my partner. Uh, I don't know. I don't even want to mention his name either, but um, he was a cool Irish guy, man. He was really cool Irish dude. Hi, mate. He, he was oh, really. That might, that's not even that's Irish. That's not even Irish. That's, like, <laughs> that's Australian. Australian mixed with Britain. Yeah. You went hard left. Wait, uh, what is it? Let me not go there. <laughs> right. So no, but like we we took this post because no one else wanted it, and it was a good a good shift. We wanted three to eleven, so we took it, and we <laughs> we had we had that um. We had that area, and it was very, very. At, at some point, it was rowdy. There was a lot of assault on staff at that time really? in that area. That whole, the whole area with, with the MOs, the yeah. whole, the whole. And, and if you know, if you know corrections, and, and if you're listening, hey, thanks for subscribing. Um, you know exactly what I'm talking about, especially if you don't know that facility. You know the area I'm talking about because it, it's, it's. It was at one point, it was a hot, hot area when I was there. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, me and just a group, the whole group of officers that worked that area were very close, very tight, um, due to the fact that it was such a hot area and we we would feed off of each other, man. We would work very closely together. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was very much um, a, a close, tight area. I mean, most corrections can be close. So there's a lot of there's a lot of good people out there that work. Um, 
and that's cool. And you know, and the, the fact is, yeah, back in that in that time, you had to watch each other's back constantly. You always had to have each other's back because you never knew when shit would go down. You know, it doesn't exist like that. I, from what I hear, I have, uh, family members that are officers, and you hear that, that there's no longer that that teamwork. And people it, working yeah, together. Yeah, it's it's very difficult now. It's very difficult. If you do find that a, a, a good group of people to work with, man, you're a lucky person. Like my my student, uh, she she currently works at a at a facility where it's also very very hard to work at, but she's found a nice group of of people that watch her back and she's got a steady shift and she's got a good post and oh, that's good. and and she was very lucky to find that because it's it's hard to find you know it's, it's it's difficult i mean the older generation that that i had worked with they were very open they were very much uh looking to, to take you under their wing and and help you out and teach you the ropes you know it's kind of uh i don't know maybe all those people have retired now because um I mean, I had a lot of good people that I worked with in, in that facility. Um, and uh, not knowing... Do you miss it? I do at times. Sometimes I do miss it. I miss the, the friendships I made, yeah. uh, which I still have a few friends on Facebook that still talk to me. Uh, some of the guys have retired. They've moved to Phoenix. Uh, a couple wow. other... Yeah, it's old timers, man. A lot of I, old-timers. I don't blame them for moving to Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so That's a topic that we can get into. Yeah. <laughs> Do am, how, how much do I still love New York? <laughs> and I still love it. <laughs> but yeah, so as as a non martial artist, you know, and, and there's a lot of altercations that I've had, uh, you know, in my time over there, and I felt, I feel now that if I would have if I would have known martial arts, I might have been able to handle them better. I, I got a, I got hurt a lot too. I, 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 I hurt I know, my shoulder. Man. Yeah, I got hit with a phone like those old phones, those big. Yeah. Clunky phone. I got oh, hit. The yeah, I got. They're like a rotary phone. Yeah. I got hit with one of those. I got hit right across the head. Damn it. Oh, that reminds me of me in high school. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Somebody got a typewriter. The metal one. Oh, just kidding. typewriters. <laughs> Remember those old typewriters? Yeah, 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 yeah. Heavy thing. Yeah. I, you know, I, I got hurt a lot, and 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 I think had I known what I know now, uh, I might have been able to uh, handle those situations a lot better too. It, it was um. It was it was an interesting time in my life, and I feel that um, my time in corrections shaped the martial artist I am today, because I can take a lot of the stuff that I've seen and, and I've been through, and I can apply it to to when I'm teaching my students. Right, and they have a point of reference. Too, yeah, and it's cool. it's cool, and and like uh, some of my students are officers. You know, I got one of my black belts is, is Rob. He's an yeah. officer. He's bridge and tunnel, and then I have an NYPD guy here. Yeah, and have a few. I have a, a military guy. Guy working. He's working on some some you know security stuff, and it's cool that I. I can I, I can give them a, a point of view that not a lot of other uh, martial arts instructors have, which is the law enforcement aspect of uh, of, of doing things. Because as much as you want to 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 use everything in your freaking repertoire on somebody as as a man of the law, you cannot. You have to be very responsible with what you do because again, people are always recording, or there's recording devices on site, and um, I, the fact that I now I can take everything I know now and everything that happened in my past, I can put it all together and give them some sort of curriculum that they can even use. Uh, the wisdom is there when you teach. It is, and, and I feel that's because I was a correctional officer. I feel like that, even though I knew nothing then except for some pro wrestling moves that I, I was able to pull off one or two, uh, but... I still have a good memory of most of the incidents that happen, and I feel that experience I, is experience, yeah, right? At the end yeah. of the day, wisdom is wisdom. Uh, yeah. uh, and the fact uh, that now I can apply it with the, to to help you know the future of, of of law enforcement here, I feel like that's something we might never see is a, a, a an instructor going into an academy and teaching things. But what we can do is individually uh, teach the the officers themselves, especially if they join the gym or you know. If, I, I might even do a seminar one day just for just for law enforcement, which is which is something I, I wanted to do for yes. a while. <laughs> and I know you wanted to do it as well, seeing as how you were right next to Coba, right next to the the damn Coba yeah. the union for correction officers. He yeah, was right I, there. Yeah, I don't want to drop no too much on the on some of that out. <laughs> stuff uh, but that's a whole other yeah no they're all good people man I, I know some of the captains on the island still. yeah 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 and, you know what I mean no there's, there's a lot of good people there's a lot of good people but um, I feel like the it sucks that the academy didn't prepare me as well as they should have uh, physically right the paperwork everything that was easy stuff right just the, the just the, the the clerical stuff that's always gonna be something that needs to be taught but I feel it 
NYPD, DOC, they need to figure out a way to better teach uh, officers how to be physically prepared. It's funny because that's what Norman used to say too. He says they right. need training. He used to say that. Yeah. He went, but it's a whole budget thing. It's, at the end of yeah, the day, remember how money. cheap they were. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. went to all these schools and wanted us to 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 pay. They wanted to pay like they, he said one time at the beginning, like give me a price and I'll pay half. <laughs> so I gave him a price. Yeah. And, and let's say I give him a hundred dollars a month for ex- a, a hypothetical example. He would say, "Oh, fifty dollars is a lot." <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And they didn't want to pay it. And yeah. they rather, but yet, I, I I hate to say this, but the, yet, a lot of these guys are doing double shifts like almost every day. Yeah. Won't go work out because they're working a lot. I respect right. that. But yeah. it, but they're willing to spend this money on these really nice cars. It is. Nice it is, man. They're eating junk food. I yeah. see them always standing in front of like, Dude, like junk food. That's a big thing eating, about, you know? about yeah. corrections and, and corrections. Yeah. Most of these guys, they might start physically fit. But yeah, they don't stay there. Not at and all. And then it's not just the lifestyle. It's how they eat, the stress. Yeah. You know, the stress is insane, man. I remember I drank a lot uh, because of that job. I, you know, it, it, it drove me to, to areas of, that I never really should have ever been into, man. Uh, I was straight edge before corrections, man. I was I hadn't had one drink uh, up until I started corrections. And now you're. I'm crooked as fuck. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you got there, but no, no you're, straight, you're one of the no, just for the record, you're one of the straightest guys I know. Uh, now, yeah, now, yeah, now, at least on the map. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> at the desk, you're a little bit of a. We yeah. were talking about that last time. Yeah, it's so opposite. Just mean as fuck. But no, yeah. the, but the thing is, man, uh, when I was doing corrections, I felt had I had I, looking back, had I known anything specifically like practical. That I could have used, like even, even the most basic of things. I wish I would have known that, and I might have been able to prevent a couple injuries, prevent a couple, you know, sc- have scars. That uh, you know, and and I feel like I feel like had I had I known something, that maybe the academy would have provided for me, I, I would have been better off. So we need to figure out a way. We have met a while ago and discussed this. We right. actually had this topic on the, the Green Gate. Yeah. We had it, we, we touched based on it a few different times. We were discussing because at the time that we met, I had my school and I was right. literally next door. Right. I told next you door that I proposed. Yeah. Remember, I told yeah. you I put in a proposal mm-hmm. uh, for teaching on the island, yeah. on, the, on, the, on the islands right. and on the, the boat houses, as they yeah. call them. Or in the, in one of the houses, the academies too, and 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 we were discussing you. That's one of the big topics we have. Because I had show, told you I, I did a proposal, which never got accepted. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we never got an answer. Right. And, or whenever I saw him, he would, you know, ah, it's too expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's everything. Sad because, if it's not in the budget, it's not. Yeah, and it's a vicious cycle. And like yeah. I said, they only they need instructors. They need people with experience. They yeah. need people that can show these guys how to. And I remember. Trying to sit down and come up with a way. I learned about the nine eleven, which is this t- the tool you guys. Right, it's cut. the hook knife. The hook knife. Yeah. I learned about talking with them about the nine eleven because I said, "What are you guys allowed to carry?" They said, "A pen and a nine eleven and, and the pepper the spray and the pepper spray and yeah. the pepper spray on the island. Off the island, you can have a gun because yeah. you're transporting. But it was on the island. You right. need it. And on the I'm island is where you mostly need it. And they were telling me that even the nine elevens weren't even that sharp. They Not at all. They used to cut when people trying to kill themselves. Exactly. Like, hanging themselves. Yeah, we would use those to peel apples, bro. It was fucking it, as right? useless as. But I mean, actually, I did use it to cut somebody somebody actually did try to hang up on me once and i did cut them right. down yeah but you, there's no there's no self-defense application not at all of these. i not mean you could really all. cut somebody i don't know if you can even cut a finger no nah, it would take it would be i would have you would have you to let me do it and and, it, and it's and the knife is built so you can only use it in a circular, in a circular fashion right, it's a hook, so yeah a hook knife, right? yeah it's, it's, so it's and, that and, the pen, thing. and i was gonna actually write an article about that the pen is not even the sword it's like you might actually do it yeah. and demonstrate techniques yeah anyway my point was that there's the really you just stuck with hand to hand. That's you, a, that's all. Uh, that's pretty much, man. And the, and what they did and have soft hand. What they yeah. What they did have on the island in, in the weight room was a punching bag, and most of the guys were there just hitting that bag constantly. Venting, venting. And pretty <laughs> much, it's it's just like it's just like uh, back in the day when you would put up, put up your dukes, man. If you were gonna fight an inmate, there would it would be a fist fight. It is would this, always did, be. Did a they fist have fight. fair fights though? Like, is it? Did, did you just say okay? You're yeah, one usually, on one. You, it, there's an honor system in there. I mean, I mean, if an inmate. Like most of the fights, it wasn't like you got beef, I got beef, we fighting. It's more like uh, maybe I'm breaking up a fight and you throw a punch at me, or maybe you're attacking a, a civilian chaos. staff. Right. It's very much within the moment, right? It wasn't like yo, three o'clock, meet me here. Also, oh, it's chaos. It's yeah, more like control. Chaos. Exactly. Like, that's okay. exactly what it was. So, so, so I think that that's when. I like think- here, here's a quick story. I was taking a count one day and and had everybody sit on their beds. And I get past this little Mexican dude. 
He stands up behind me and says, hey, he says, yo soy el diablo. I'm the devil. And he fucking lunges at me. What? He lunges at me and he's fucking clawing at me with his, he thinks he's the actual devil or something. The Aztec he's king he's king grabbing me, he's throwing, he's throwing punches at me and we're and I'm between the two beds and I'm trying to get up and he's still hitting at me. The inmates came and fucking pulled him off of me. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was insane. It was just the most randomest shit. And this little Mexican guy, and, and you know, he got pummeled afterwards, but in the moment it's it's unexpected. It's unexpected. You're just kind of you 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 and you're just doing one thing, and the next thing you know, boom, assault, right? Wow. And, and there's a there's a couple videos you can watch. Like uh, one of my friends sent me uh, of this this uh, inmate sucker punching an officer, a female officer, that, right? Just sucker punched her for an, 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 out of nowhere. Yeah, that's that's the kind of thing that happens, right? Wow. These random kind of distracted events where one guy will get your attention and the other guy will come up around you. Uh, like this one inmate, when one officer got cut, right? Two inmates attacked one officer. Wow. One grabbed him from behind, and the other one tried to cut a cut his throat, <gasps> right? But the officer managed to drop his head, and he only caught him on the face, right? Wow. So it was very much, very much random stuff like that, and that's stuff that no one can be prepared for, man. I mean, I say it all the time: all you could do is be ready. Be ready but with your man. goddamn training, right? Not with these little. Yeah. One hour sessions twice a week at the academy for six months or however long it is. It's not enough, man. And I heard it's just for liability purposes. It's exactly what it's for. It's just so you sign the paper and say you now know this. So you can't sue us because we uh, trained you. Exactly. You've been trained. Exactly. You were trained by sign a, this by this instructor on this date here, and 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 that's kind of that's kind of where 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 that uh, that's at. I was I was. Physically unprepared for corrections, and I had to. Thankfully, I had a lot of good partners, and and they taught me the ropes and how to do things and how to do <coughs> corrective interviews with these inmates. So we were able to maintain control as best we could, right? So things like that. It's just it's very random. Um, I wish uh, maybe one day we can go and find a way to teach these guys. If not, just join our gym. <laughs> they, well, that's, that's or join a gym. <laughs> not just our gym. Join, I, I'd like you to join our gym, but join a gym and learn martial arts. And for the record, there are a few, maybe a handful of officers that are on the island they who are. do train martial they arts. Are. They are. They are. Like I had guys that work with me, they were, they were both they were both trained <laughs> at Matt <Sarah's. laughs> They both trained at Matt Sarah's. See? And uh, yeah, they, they were pretty, I mean, they were older, but you know, <laughs> they were they were they were prepared. They were ready. But that was some no, that's some good stories. Uh I think that uh the I guess we both got to uh, the question was how we started this was yeah. have you ever had to use what you learned? Right. And that's a good topic. Something that we uh, at least I can say in years that I've been training often came up as a question that right. probably the same as what style would win right. along with that would be like have you ever had to use it right you know, that's a right. big question you get a lot as a martial yeah, artist yeah, yeah. hey have you had to use it yeah. have you ever had to use it in the street in the real world blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. and that was i mean maybe not so much today but definitely yeah yeah yeah. yeah of course even, of course so, uh, and it's great that I, I i never had to use it because i didn't know it <laughs> now, <laughs> now i know it, it every time we roll <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> now i know it now i know it and now i can teach other people to use it uh better right. And which is really cool. And I it's think. funny because we do have in, in jiu one of the things that we love about jujitsu is that we have that controlled, uh, chaotic, controlled violence class. We call it rolling. Yeah. Where you learn the techniques. And when you're a beginner and you're rolling with some, when you're in, when you're advanced, we're talking blue belt and up, and you meet a beginner for the first time. Right. It's almost like being in a real fight because it don't is. Know it very much is that <laughs> that fresh new white belt that yeah. knows nothing yeah. and is really strong. He's chaotic, gonna try to strong. hold you down, yeah. and it's gonna be as real as a, a fight as can be because yeah. he's he's just trying not to get submitted. Yeah. Right. Sometimes you got guys trying to peel your fingers. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you'd be surprised. Grab your crotch. Yeah. Your throat. Like this guy. This guy tried to put yeah. a finger in my throat. Right. Yeah. I told you about that. Yeah. yeah. I told him, hey, I'm not your girl. No. He's <laughs> <laughs> such a bad joke. <laughs> this is bad comedy. <laughs> no, Uncle but jokes. Uncle jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it it's 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 cool to to, to have that that uh, I like to call it that white belt panic. Right. It's 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 so much. Uh, it's just this. Yeah, it's this fierce energy that I don't know anything, but I'm gonna try everything. You know that kind of that kind of feel, man. We got a lot of those white belts here that are starting to learn shit, and also have that white belt panic. So it's kind of it's it kind of throws us off sometimes, right? Because they 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 know one or two things here and there, 
and they got the panic, so it kind of even makes it. That, that's it's the challenge. We too. take these guys that come inside. We, we, we as instructors, a trainer, because I'm, a, I also am a trainer here. Yeah. Uh, you're the main instructor, right. uh, the master here. But we all get some experience. Uh, some of the blue belts, purple belts, get to teach sometimes. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And one of the joys that we have is helping, watching people go from we welcome them, we do the introductory, yeah. we move them through, and it's nice to see them go the from progression. that progression. Yeah. yeah, that's the best feeling, right? That's from that chaotic yeah. white belt that wants to kill you to yeah. that you see them actually creating techniques. They don't know anything. They can't do anything. In a couple of months, they're doing it, and they're showing other people to do it. And you know, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. cool. It's cool. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. I feel like I feel like that's. That's the uh, that's the best part of teaching, and and to go back to what we were talking about, about um, using the martial arts in our work previous or live. Oh. <laughs> Bells and whistles. <laughs> that means it's time to end the show. Is that? <laughs> Paul Linda. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, no, that'd be great. That would be awesome. I wonder if she'll call again. That'd be really cool. But um, like I was, what was I saying? I lost everything. My train of thought. Whatever, guys. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, yeah, we're we're done. We're pretty uh, much up there, yeah. right? I hope we answered. I hope that we answered some of the questions. That yeah. If we forget stuff, we'll probably throw it in another in yeah. podcast. We don't want to. We just do wanted to share a little bit of our of our history. Uh, you know, the, 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 the our back in the day stuff, yes. our war stories, if you will. <laughs> and uh, we have a lot of war stories, and we're trying to figure out which we can tell without getting in any trouble. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I, I got a lot of I, without mentioning people. I'm pretty sure you did pretty good. Some, yeah, but somebody's gonna be like, "Dude, I know you're talking about," and they're like, yeah, yeah. "Don't talk about oh, that I, stuff." I, I, dropped, I dropped a few <laughs> names. Oh, you dropped names. I didn't drop any names. But, but the guys that I dropped, they've been out of it for so long. Yeah. Some of them are still in the industry, yeah. but they're friends of mine. We're cool. They, yeah, I didn't and, say anything that's gonna be. Oh, yeah, a lot of the people that I'm, right? I'm pretty sure, pretty much everybody I worked with at that time is retired now, with the exception of a few people going into their like 20 plus years. Because, you know, there's people that go for full pension, half pension. You know, they do 25 years. They get a, they take a quarter of pension. I don't know. But they stay on past the 20. Because when I started, it was 20 years and then you retire. Yeah, not anymore, right? And then, no, I think it's like 25 now for everybody. Wow. Or, or for, for, the, for, the new, for the new people. But pretty much everyone I worked with either has five years left or has is somewhere on a beach <laughs> relaxing, not thinking about the time they had to... Uh, pummel a guy in a cell because he threw piss on me, <laughs> right? But uh, yeah, I've had piss on me. Yeah, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> That's just lovely. Yeah, well, it's the the life that I chose at that moment. But I, uh, it was fun. Uh, so guys, I hope you had some uh, fun and listening to us ramble on about our our past. We'll be doing a lot more of that. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys for the support. We yeah. appreciate it. We're looking forward to seeing you guys. On the mat, yeah. Any questions? Soon we're gonna try to make it so you guys we have a guest on, yeah, yeah. Maybe even work on uh, getting calls, yeah. Uh, I and mean, I'm trying to get this on the uh, on the iPod. Uh, what do you call it? The the podcasting on the i on iPhone and stuff. I don't know what that's called. I'm still oh, working on snap. that. Show. I'm still working on that. <laughs> uh, but you can find us on YouTube. Like and subscribe, guys. Uh, we'll Facebook talk to you later. Yeah, all, all of that stuff. Later, guys. Bye.